零一五年第三条题目就系讲生态系统嘅。今次呢幅图咧就显示咗喺一个海洋嘅生态系统入面，唔同生物嘅喂食关系 （feeding relationship）。咁我哋呢幅图啦，都见到啊喺海洋入面唔同嘅生物啦，浮游植物啦，有浮游动物啦，海星啦，之如此类。咁 Part A 咧就问我哋啦。咁喺呢个食物网当中，究竟边一条嘅食物链系最短嘅呢？咁呢个题目呢，实质就要考我哋嘅第一样嘢，就系边一个生物系生产者，自不然系浮游植物啦。跟住啦，我哋就揾下啲消费者啦，跟住就揾返一个最短嘅食物链，点样去表达一条食物链啊？就系、是、透过正確嘅箭嘴方向啦。咁记返，箭嘴方向呢，就系一个能量传递嘅方向，同埋物质流动嘅方向，所以系由草。传啲能量俾白兔，再传啲能量俾狐狸啦。而唔同生物呢，佢哋喺个食物链或者食物网嘅角色呢，就可以分为生产者、消费者同埋分解者。咁我哋讲能量嘅传递呢，主要就係讲生产者同埋消费者。咁之前呢，两 s i 拍嘅温书片都有讲过㗎啦。分解者呢，我哋係唔会将佢摆喺食物网入面嘅。咁啊，因为所有生物呢，其实都总会死。咁当我哋死咗之后呢。其实分解者都会利用佢哋嘅尸体作为食物去得到能量嘅，所以如果我摆咗只分解者喺响树嘅话咧，全部生物都会揾个箭嘴指住过去，咁成个食物网咧就会好乱噶啦。啲喺食物网咧，你系唔会见到分解者嘅存在，但系唔代表佢唔存在。正如头先所讲啦，我要揾到个生产者，再揾下啲消费者，咁所以最短嘅食物链咧，应该就系浮游植物能量传送去到鱼。再將啲能量傳送去對鯊魚，最短嘅就係呢一條食物鏈啦。咁其餘嘅食物鏈呢？而其餘嘅食物鏈呢，其實都會多咗一隻生物嘅，例如啦，浮遊植物就俾海蝸牛食咗，再俾海星食咗，再俾鯊魚食，咁就一二三四，咁就係四隻生物啦。又或者啦，浮遊植物俾海蝸牛食咗，俾八爪魚食咗，八爪魚再俾鯊魚食咗，都係一。二三四，咁所以大家留意下啦，喺呢个食物网当中嘅食物链咧，大多数都系有四只生物嘅，咁啊唯独呢一条食物链咧真系最短啦。咁喺落去 B part 之前咧，问大家一个问题啦，呢一条嘅题目变奏，亦都可以问下你喺一个食物网当中，究竟佢表达咗几多条嘅食物链咧？你有兴趣试下嘅，将你嘅答案打喺留言区，睇下你啱唔啱啦。而 part B 咧就叫我哋根据翻 A part 嘅呢条食物链，浮游植物、鱼去到鲨鱼。要画翻一个数量金字塔，咁当然你要考下我哋啦。对于一个正常嘅数量金字塔，究竟系咩形状呢？点解系直立嘅呢？就系、是、个底好阔，而层层递减就尖起上嚟啦。呢、这个就系直立嘅金字塔。点解随住个食性层次上升？生物嘅数量就会减少呢，咁你都照样解释埋先。虽然题目冇问到你，题目就系要你画嘢啫，但系阵间就会问点解噶啦。原因就系在于喺每一个食性层次之间有一个能量嘅流失，所以越系传上去嘅食性层次咧，所传送嘅能量就越嚟越少。与此同时咧，捕猎者比起佢嘅猎物，佢哋个身体大细系为之大。所以佢哋都需要多啲嘅能量去生存，所以就会导致到呢，例如有一千隻嘅浮游植物，就只係能够支撑到十条鱼嘅生存，而十条鱼呢，就只能够支撑到一条鲨鱼嘅生存，所以个数量就会层层递减啦。而呢条题目有咩变奏啊？第一啦，就会考下我哋画下生物质量嘅金字塔，又或者画下能量嘅金字塔啦。而当中佢哋有冇啲倒转啊？唔規則嘅形状呢？咁其实除咗能量金字塔。必然系直立之外咧，其实生物质量嘅金字塔啊，数量嘅金字塔啊，佢哋都会出现一个不规则嘅情况，又或者倒转嘅情况嘅。呢啲情况你识晒未咧？好，去到 part C 啦，头先亦都已经轻轻解释咗点解数量金字塔会一个直立嘅形状。咁而家就仔细啲去理解啦。其实成条题目就系考紧我哋喺食物层次之间系有一个能量嘅流失，而呢个食性层次之间嘅能量流失。同每一个食性层次嘅生物嘅数量又有啲咩嘅关系呢？咁正如头先所讲，一个低啲嘅食性层次嘅能量，当佢传送去高啲嘅食性层次嘅时候咧，系会有能量嘅流失。而基于捕猎者嘅体型比起猎物为之大，佢哋需要更加多嘅能量，所以我哋需要大量嘅浮游植物先能够提供到足够嘅能量俾条鱼。我哋都需要多啲嘅鱼，先能够提供到足够能量俾鲨鱼。所以随住食性层次嘅递升啦，每一个食性层次嘅生物数量咧。
就係會減低啦。個 part 啲咧就係關於科學探究啦。成個食物網係講緊唔同生物之間嘅餵食關係。咁究竟我哋係點樣確認得到浮游植物就俾鱼食，鱼就俾鲨鱼食，海蜗牛就会俾白爪鱼食，而唔系直接俾只鲨鱼食。點解我哋會知道呢一啲嘅餵食關係呢？咁其實成條題目呢，就係考緊我哋對於科學探究嘅理解。第一個就係講緊觀察，而第二個就係作出假説，跟住就做實驗去驗證我哋嘅假説係咪正確啦。第一個方法就係透過解剖捕獵者，睇下佢嘅腸胃入面有冇相對應嘅獵物啦。哦，你話條鯊魚食啲魚啫？咁我咪劏開條鯊魚睇下佢個胃入面，佢嘅腸入面有冇啲魚，或者未被消化晒嘅魚囉。第二啦，就真係去一去 field trip 啦，係一個 field observation， 睇下究竟佢哋食乜嘢啦。例如啦，我哋真係見到條鯊魚呢，就會衝去啲魚群嗰處呢去食啲魚仔嘅，或者啦，我哋真係見到隻白爪魚呢，去慢慢喐下喐下去食隻海蝸牛嘅。咁呢個都係我哋直接嘅觀察。而另一款呢，就真係喺實驗室嗰度做啦，隻白爪魚。啊、我俾啲唔同嘅嘢佢食啊！我俾啲蚬睇下佢食唔食啊！我俾啲海蜗牛睇下佢食唔食啊！我俾條魚又睇下佢食唔食啊！呢、這、一個都係觀察嘅方法之一。好，又嚟到一點出發嘅時間啦。成條題目就係由食物網所開始嘅一條路徑，可以問我哋嘅就係有關於食物鏈同埋能量流失。而能量流失係取決於嗰條食物鏈嘅長度咯，又或者喺呢個食物鏈當中係有動物嘅話，我哋亦都可以考慮下。究竟呢啲動物係冷血動物啦，定係温血動物啦？咁一啲題型嘅變奏呢，就會問下你啦。點解我哋有塊田呢？我哋寧願種下啲農作物，就唔好攞嚟種草去養牛，反而係可以 support 到多啲嘅人口呢。即係話寧願種粟米，跟住俾人食，好過攞塊田去種草，跟住再俾牛食。其實呢條題目就係講緊食物鏈嘅長度啦。咁啊，因为啦，我个种粟米或者种米，直接去养人呢，咁啊，的确系少一啲嘅食性层次，因为就系净系得两层嘅啫，就系、是、米，跟住就系人啦。但系如果养牛就唔同咁讲法啦，就系、是、草，跟住牛，跟住先到人，就系、是、已经牵涉咗三种生物，食物链长咗，能量流失亦都会大咗。所以呢度咧就解释翻，短啲嘅食物链。或者少啲嘅食性層次，會導致到一個少啲嘅能量流失，所以就有多啲嘅能量去支撐到咁龐大嘅人口啦。而另一款佢要問一下咯，冷血同埋温血動物，即係話啦，我哋寧願食魚啊，定係食牛呢？咁我哋會寧願食魚喎，因為魚係冷血動物，佢自己唔需要成日用能量去保持佢嘅體温。相反呢，牛呢係温血動物。佢需要用能量去 keep 住自己嘅体温，而喺我哋嘅 relative one 人类嘅生理学当中，我哋都学过，一隻温血嘅动物系无时无刻都处于一个能量流失嘅状态。你会发现，无论养牛啊、养猪啊、养鸡咧，佢哋呢啲温血动物咧，其实佢哋都有大量嘅能量流失嘅。先唔好讲我哋养啲牛啊、猪啊、鸡啊，其实系会令到个食物链长咗。這裡呢度咧，大家就要留意翻。如何去控制到一個食物鏈嘅能量流失啦？好，另一個導向呢，就係問返科學探究啦。喺呢個題目呢，本身都有問到嘅，生物之間嘅餵食關係，我哋點樣去確認得到出嚟啦？除咗餵食呢一個暴裂嘅關係之外啦，競爭嘅關係，你又睇唔睇得出呢？又或者喺呢個食物網當中，任何一隻生物完全消失咗嘅話，又會為整個嘅生態系統帶嚟啲咩嘅影響呢？喺呢度我要讲嘅，有好多同学呢，净係话，哎呀，只要冇嘢生物呢，个生态系统咪唔平衡囉。」鬼唔知咩？废话嚟嘅，你读过成课书㗎，你唔好同我讲你净係识唔平衡呢三个字啊，係有得解释嘅。OK， 而喺呢条题目，我想讲多啲嘅就系有关于金字塔、数量金字塔、生物质量嘅金字塔同埋能量嘅金字塔。而呢条题目啦，亦都可以问多啲嘅就系有关于食物网，唔单止讲能量流动。仲有物质嘅流动，所以喺生态系统嘅题目唔会净系问你能量，下次可能就会问下你碳循环同埋氮循环啦。Two o n five question three is about the ecosystem. So in this diagram, you can see the feeding relationship among some organism in the marine ecosystem. So you can see the food web here. So for part A, we need to write down the shortest food chain found in this diagram. So in this question, we have to identify the producer first, then find the consumer. And then present the food chain with the correct arrow direction. So the arrow direction it means eaten by, 
also shows the direction of the energy and the material flow from one organism to another. So we can see that the grass is eaten by the rabbit and the rabbit is eaten by the fox. We can categorize the organism into producer, consumer, and decomposer. Depends on their role in the energy flow. So in this food web, the phytoplankton is the producer. And then we can find the fish and shark as the consumer. And it is the shortest food chain. Phytoplankton is eaten by the fish and the fish is eaten by the shark. So for the other food chain, so you can see that. So for other food chain, phytoplankton, sea snail, octopus, and shark. So there are one, two, three, four, four organisms. And for the other food chain, phytoplankton, zooplankton, fish, and then shark. Also one, two, three, four. Also four organisms. And for part A, the possible question variation is that how many food chains are in this food web? So leave your answer in the comment section. And then for part B, we need to draw the pyramid of number for the food chain in part A. Phytoplankton, fish, and shark. So first of all, we need to recall the shape of a typical pyramid of numbers. It is upright. The typical pyramid of number has a broad base. And the size of the bar decrease up the trophic level. So what's the reason? Actually, it is asked in part C, but I try to briefly explain it first. Less and less energy is available to organisms at higher trophic level, and the predator is usually larger in body size than its prey. So that's why they require more energy to maintain its life. So that's why number of organisms that can be supported at a higher trophic level is usually smaller. So we can see the pyramid of number. The idea is that, let's say, there are 1,000 phytoplankton. They may just be able to support 10 fish. And these 10 fish can only provide sufficient energy to support one shark to survive. And for this question, any variation. First of all, it can ask you to draw the pyramid of bar mass, the pyramid of energy for the particular food chain. And you also need to recall the inverted or the irregular shape of the pyramid of numbers. In fact, only the pyramid of energy always show the upright shape. For the pyramid of number and the pyramid of the bar mass, they may show the inverted or the irregular shape. And then for part C, I have already explained it a bit. Explain the shape of the pyramid of number draw in part B. Upright shape. So you need to recall the concept of energy loss along the trophic levels. And you need to relate the energy loss to the concept of the number of organisms at each trophic level. As I mentioned before, there is energy loss when the energy in the trophic level is transferred to the next higher level. And the individuals at the lower levels are smaller in size. Therefore, a larger number of individuals at a lower trophic level is required to support those at upper levels. And for part D, we need to suggest two practical methods that allow you to confirm the feeding relationship among various organisms in this ecosystem. So in this diagram, we have this food web. But how do you know that the phytoplankton is eaten by the sea snail and the sea snail is eaten by the starfish or by the octopus? So this question is checking the concept about the scientific investigation. So we need to do the observation, we need to do the observation, and we need to make the hypothesis. And after we make the hypothesis, we need to do experiment to prove if the hypothesis is correct or not. For example, we have the hypothesis that mm, for the phytoplankton, it is the producer, right? Or so it may be eaten by the fish, it may be eaten by the zooplankton, it may be eaten by the sea snail, and I think that it may be also eaten by the starfish. So am I correct? Or I need to do some scientific investigation. For example, dissecting the gut of the predator to find out what prey items are inside. So for example, I dissect the shark. For example, we can see the fish bones or we can find the endoskeleton of the octopus. So it implies that the shark they feed on octopus and the fish. We have the field observation directly. We go to the ocean and then we really see that a shark is really hunting the fish. Or we go diving and then we see the octopus. They are really eating the sea snail. 
we capture those organisms and put them in the laboratory. And then we can do the laboratory study by offering different praise to the predator. For example, we have the octopus, fighting sea snail, starfish or fish. And let's see which type of organism will the octopus eat. Let's talk about the critical mapping. This question, it starts from the food web and it can be broken down into food chain. And for the food chain, we talk about the energy loss. And for the energy loss, we need to consider two factors. The first factor is about the length of the food chain. And the second factor is the energy loss by the organisms, especially the animal, including the pokiloferms and the homeoferms. So any possible question variation. Why would a piece of land used to grow crops support a larger human population than if it was used to graze the keto? So the idea is that we rather use the land to grow some rice or a maize to feed a human being rather than to use the land to grow some grass and then use the grass to graze the keto. And it's related to the length of the food chain. The idea is that there are fewer trophic levels when the land is used to grow crops. We grow rice, maize, and then human being can feed on the rice directly. So that's why there are only two trophic levels, right? But what about we are using the land to grow some grass and then use the grass to uh, graze the keto. So that means the grass and then the cow and then the human being. So there are free traffic levels, right? That's why less energy is lost through fewer traffic levels. And therefore, more energy is available to support a larger human population. So what about the food chain? It includes some animal. For example, the fish. For example, the cow, the chicken, the pigs. So we prefer the pokiloferm. For example, the fish. Because they are not like the homeoferms. The cow, the pig, the chicken. For the homeoferm. They need to maintain their relatively constant body temperature. That's why there will be larger energy loss. However, for the pokiloferm, they are not able to control their body temperature. Therefore, they do not experience that much of energy loss than the homeoferm. In the topic of elective one, human physiology, we know that for the homeoferm, actually, we are losing heat energy to the surrounding constantly at every second so that's why you can see how so you can see how large is the energy loss by the homeoferm therefore if there is any animal in the food chain we prefer pokiloferm and for the second idea is about the scientific investigation apart from the feeding relationship so can you record the predation and the competition what about one particular organism disappear in the food web so what will be the effect on the ecosystem? For some students, they just keep talking about that. Oh, if some organism disappear in the ecosystem, the ecosystem will be in balance. Everyone know it. You are biology student. You are science students. You must be able to explain it rather than just talking about imbalance, imbalance. Just say layman. They can also answer it. But you are a scientist. You are different from them. Apart from the feeding relationship asked in the question, I would like to focus on the pyramid. The pyramid of number, the pyramid of biomass, and the pyramid of energy. And also for the daily life case. So in the food web, it doesn't represent the energy flow, but also the material flow. Maybe next time it can ask you the carbon cycle and the nitrogen cycle.